Whataburger. Now there is a catchy name. It's almost like they're complimenting themselves, but squished together into one word. You don't see that often. The idea being that their food is so tasty that as soon as you bite down into it, you'll want to exclaim, what a burger. Though, I would imagine that most of the people watching this aren't incredibly familiar with them. See, they are a large, successful chain of fast food restaurants, but they haven't been too aggressive in expanding geographically. I think this is interesting. As of 2020, they have around 850 locations that amazingly combine for estimated system-wide sales of $2.7 billion a year. Let me break that down a little bit by telling you that by number of locations, they rank as the 36th largest fast food restaurant in the US, but by system-wide sales, they rank as the 22nd largest. That is a big difference, meaning they are outselling many others on the list with fewer locations. Hardee's, for example, has more than twice as many restaurants, but lower sales. In fact, when looking at average sales per restaurant, Whataburger is in third place, behind only Chick-fil-A and Raising Cane's. Both of those are categorized as chicken restaurants, meaning on a per-unit basis, Whataburger is more successful than any other hamburger chain in the country, which is partially because they haven't been too aggressive in expanding geographically. Those 850 locations only span across 14 states, all of which are in the South, and about 700 of them are in Texas. They have stayed close to their strongest market, developing a comparatively small but more loyal fan base. There is reason to believe that they will soon be attempting a big push outside of their comfort zone. I will talk more about it, but as of right now, Whataburger is like a big deal in Texas and maybe a few other southern states to a lesser extent, but not really anywhere else. So for this video, I want to focus on how that came to be the case while talking about some of the bigger successes and struggles over the years. Whataburger has always been a private company that has typically been owned and operated by the Dobson family starting with Harmon Dobson, who I would consider to be an impressive person. Even before the creation of Whataburger, he had experienced a diverse career that included farming, sales, aviation, and various international building and construction projects. In 1950, when he was in his late 30s, he teamed up with a man named Paul Burton to open up a small hamburger stand. It was portable, but they strategically placed it in Corpus Christi, Texas, right across the street from Del Mar College. Despite that busy location, sales started out slow. It took a few days for word to spread about them. It was actually the fourth day that they considered to be their big break. They sold 551 hamburgers, making them almost as much money in that one day as the previous three combined. They accomplished quite a bit in that first week, but they obviously still had a long way to go, so I've put together a list of how Whataburger grew from that point into one of the most successful chains in the country, and a big part of it has been their menus, specifically the Whataburger itself, considered to be a classic and back in 1950, it was difficult to find anything else like it. First off, it was made to order, always using fresh vegetables and cooking the meat just before it was served to the customers, but what truly made it unique was the size of it. Dobson envisioned a burger that would be so big it would take two hands to hold it. To try to turn that vision into a reality, he contacted a local bakery and requested a special order of these large 5-inch hamburger buns, but the idea was so unheard of that the bakery couldn't find big enough pans to make them. Ultimately, Dobson had to partner up with that bakery to develop those pans. And clearly, larger hamburgers became far more popular in the years that followed. Even later in that decade, the idea for Burger King's famous Whopper came from witnessing the demand for large hamburgers sold by a different restaurant. My point is that Whataburger became involved very early in what became a popular trend. Another reason behind their success would be their marketing. Harmon Dobson was a pilot, and that helped inspire some unique ideas concerning how to promote his restaurant. The most direct one would be that he would attach a banner with the name of the restaurant to the back of his plane and go up in the sky attracting attention by making a bunch of noise and dropping coupons down onto the public. But there were also more subtle ways. In fact, you may not even realize that Whataburger has adopted somewhat of an aviation inspired theme. In the 1960s, they started using their now famous orange and white stripes that were used to decorate their A-frame buildings. Dobson liked the idea of airplanes being able to see the restaurants, so he used the same color 
colors and shapes that are commonly used at airports. Even the logo is referred to as the Flying W. So I suppose if they designed everything to be visible, even from the sky, it must be effective in capturing the attention of the cars driving by. Another reason they grew is their pricing, which actually turned out to be a major dispute between the two founders. When that first Whataburger opened in 1950, the cost of one of their burgers was 25 cents, cheap enough to buy with only one coin. But early on, Dobson wanted to raise that price to 30 cents, whereas Burton felt that the customers wouldn't respond as well at that higher price point. They both felt so strongly that they ultimately split up over the argument. They made a deal where Harmon Dobson would take full control of the company, while Paul Burton would get the franchising rights to open new Whataburgers around San Antonio. And that was the arrangement that they both followed for the rest of their lives. Once Dobson had full control, he did raise the price, but again, going back to the clever marketing, he put out a sign that said, folks, we priced our burgers too low and we lost our shirts. Sorry, but we gotta raise the price to 30 cents. It's a funny but relatable explanation, so the customer seemed to be willing to pay that extra 5 cents, and then he even raised it another 5 cents shortly after, with a similar response from the public. And I also want to mention their new locations and franchising as a reason, going back to opening that first one across from the college, having one of their co-founders turn into a major franchisee, and overall being slow and strategic when spreading their reach. They operated for two years before they opened a restaurant outside of Corpus Christi. It was almost 10 years before they opened one outside of Texas, which was in Florida, and by the 1980s, they had over 300 locations that were still only found in five states. And it was in the 1980s when Whataburger started having some serious trouble. Despite continuing to open new restaurants, their overall sales went down every year from 1988 to 1993, and I have a few explanations as to why that happened. Many of them were typical. The restaurants weren't being maintained in the way that they should have. They needed repairs and updates. There was some tension between the company and the people operating the restaurants, leading to discouraged and unmotivated employees and therefore poor customer experiences. The franchisees were even threatening a lawsuit concerning their portion of rebates coming from the vendors that they felt they were owed. But one of the issues that stands out would be the changes to the menu itself. The famous Whataburger that helped make them so popular in the first place was being somewhat neglected. They were introducing all of these new menu items, various soups and salads and other stuff, using their advertising money to promote them and not seeing good results from it. Meanwhile, the Whataburger wasn't receiving much attention, so their sales were falling. Another concern at the time was the leadership. In 1967, Harmon Dobson actually died in a plane crash, forcing his wife to take control of things for a few years before someone outside of the family named Jim Peterson took over in the 1970s. He stayed in that position for the next 20 years, and by the 1990s, when everything was crumbling, there was heavy criticism that Harmon's son, Tom Dobson, should replace him, which is exactly what happened, and probably the biggest reason behind their turnaround. He addressed the issues with the managers by holding meetings with them and listening to their ideas of how to improve things. He addressed the issues with the franchisees by keeping more open communication with them and by settling all of their lawsuits within the year. He invested money in repairing and renovating many of the restaurants and even increased their advertising budget to make commercials that once again centered around their famous hamburgers. In short, he identified many of the ways that they had drifted away from his father's initial principles that had fueled their early success and found ways to bring them back. Sales started moving back in the right direction within his first year in charge and have overall continued in that same direction ever since. Today, they are about eight times higher than they were at their low point in the 1990s. Some other notable things that have happened with Whataburger over that time were in 1999, they celebrated their upcoming 50th anniversary by building their biggest restaurant appropriately in Corpus Christi, Texas, where it all started. It was over 6,000 square feet across two stories that included a statue of Harmon Dobson to honor their founder. In 2008, they announced that they would relocate their headquarters from Corpus Christi to the much larger city of San Antonio, giving the reasons that the new location offered easier travel to other states, a more skilled technology workforce, and protection against hurricanes. In 2012, Tom Dobson stepped down from his CEO position, but remained chairman of the board. Then in 2013, they entered the retail market for the first time by bottling their condiments and selling them exclusively at HEB stores, which appropriately is another Texas-centered company. And finally, potentially, the most impactful change ever to happen to them occurred in 2019. That year, the Dobson family sold the majority of Whataburger to a private equity firm called BDT Capital Partners, though they did maintain a minority interest. So even though there's still heavy family involvement as far as operation and ownership, they are not at the center of it anymore. They say that the 
main reason behind that transaction is expansion. At the time, Tom Dobson said they have a track record of success with businesses as special as ours that want to grow while preserving culture and family history. And in 2022, the company said that they are entering the largest growth phase in its 70 plus year history. And to complicate things a little bit, BDT Capital Partners is actually based in Chicago, which is kind of odd. There has been some backlash concerning the fact that this classic Texas brand is now technically based in a northern state where there are no Whataburgers. But ever since that deal, they've been working to expand into Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, Tennessee, basically making their way further up north, meaning it's potentially an exciting time for the company and an exciting time for anyone in the northern part of the country that would like to have a Whataburger somewhere around them. So for those people watching this that are mostly unfamiliar with the brand, besides what you heard in this video, of course, give it a little time because they might finally be making their way near you. Let me know in the comments, have you ever been to Whataburger? If you haven't been, are you interested in checking it out? And if you have been, where was it? And what do you think of it? What's your favorite thing to get on the menu when you go there? And do you think it's good enough to build a presence outside of their existing markets? And any other thoughts you have about Whataburger, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Whataburger! Thank you for watching.